Today, I want to share a day trading strategy that I've been testing out. It works on stocks, on crypto, and even works on some Forex pairs as well. It doesn't use any indicators, so it's really easy to set up and trade. And I've backtested it over multiple years of data and thousands of trades in order to verify it. Over on TradingView, I've brought up the 15 minute chart of the S&P 500 CFD. I've tested this on 30 minute and five minute, and it does work in both, but 15 seem to give me the best results. So that's what I'm gonna show here. It's a morning breakout strategy, which means that I'm interested in what happens when the market first opens. And specifically, I'm interested in the 9.30 candle. That is when the New York Stock Exchange opens and we typically see a lot more volume. The first thing to do is make sure that the time zone is set up correctly. So it needs to be set to New York. That way the 9.30 candle that I'm looking for is the market open in New York. So now that I found this candle, let me just zoom in a little bit. I'm specifically interested in what happens in the first 15 minutes. So the 9.30 to 9.45 time period, which is just defined by this one candle on a 15 minute chart. This defines my opening range. So I set a line at the high and the low. I'm then waiting for a breakout through the upper line. And I need this breakout to have confirmation. What I mean by that is it's not enough for the candle to just poke above and then come back down. So like these candles with long wicks here, that's not what I'm looking for. I need the candle to open below the line, break through it and then close above it. It doesn't matter if it has a wick up above, as long as the close is above that breakout line. Once I have this confirmation, that is basically my trading signal. So I then enter at the open of the next candle. So if I'm gonna place a trade here, I can then put my stop loss at the bottom of my range, which is just the low of the 9.30 candle. I then go for a 1.5 to one risk to reward ratio. And that trade doesn't take very long to complete. And that is the basic setup of the strategy. And this alone will work pretty well, but there are some additional things that I found during my testing that improve it even further. So let's take a look at a couple more examples. Here I've got my 9.30 candle, so I can mark the top and the bottom as my range. And then I wait for that breakout like before. So remember, I'm ignoring this candle because yes, it broke through the line, it closed back below it. So I'm waiting for a confirmed breakout, which then happens on this candle over here. So this breaks through and it closes above it. However, I don't take that trade. And that's not because I've got hindsight and I can see that this didn't go well but it's because I tested various entry times. And what I found is that when I enter trades later in the day, they become less and less profitable. This candle here is the 12 o'clock candle. And for this strategy, that is too late to be taking a trade. The last candle that I'm allowed to take a trade on is the 11.45. If this candle had broken through, then yes, I would have taken that trade. But because it didn't and it happened on a 12 o'clock, I don't take that one. And I can actually back this up with data from my testing. After testing the strategy on the S&P 500, I then grouped all of the trades by the hour when they were entered. And then I looked at the average return based on those trades. And what I found was that A, the majority of the trades were taken within the first couple of hours, and B, that's where the profits came from. In general, trades that were entered later tended to be losers on average. And this is why I put in a time limit for the strategy that I will only take entries as long as they happen between 10 and 12 o'clock. That means that I actually have quite a small trading window. This makes sense for this type of strategy because it is a breakout. So I'm looking for momentum early after the market opens. But that means that I need to maximize this two hour trading window. And the way I do that is by taking any trade signal that occurs during that time. And what I mean by that is that if I get stopped out and then another entry signal appears before 12 o'clock, I will take that second entry. It doesn't happen often, so I couldn't find a good example, but this one is close enough. So this 9.30 candle, it defines my range. The candle afterwards closes out above it. So this is where my trade begins. Now let's say this trade continued down. In this case, it didn't hit the stop loss, but if it had, the candle after that broke through the range again. So I would take that trade because it is before 12 o'clock. And this is based on my test results. I found that it's still profitable to take these trades even if you already got stopped out on the previous one. The final condition of the strategy is that trades must be left to run until they hit their stop loss or take profit. 
So in this example, let's take this 930 candle. I've got the high and the low marked. I then have the candle after that breaking through immediately. So I'll place a trade at the open of the candle after. Stop goes down here at the low of my 930 range. And then I'm targeting a 1.5 risk to reward. So if I set that up here, you can see that this trade doesn't actually hit anything within that day. In my testing, I found that most of the trades do close within the same day because we're entering early on, but there are some that don't. And the longest trade actually came to about six days. However, the test results show that the strategy performs best when the trades are left to run to their own conclusion. If holding trades overnight isn't an option, then the trade should just be closed at the end of the trading day. So that means that when you're at the last candle, wherever that is, you just close out whether it's a small profit or a loss, it doesn't matter. I tested this condition as well. And while it does hurt the strategy's performance, it's still profitable. And now that I've talked about all the different conditions, let me just recap all of the trading rules. This strategy trades on the 15 minute chart and the time must be set to New York because I'm looking for the market open. The candle I'm interested in is the 9.30 to 9.45 a.m. candle. So if we find that here, I can then mark the high and the low, which then defines my opening range. I wait for a price to break through the upper line. So this green candle just after it, that is not enough. Yes, it did break above it with that tiny little wick. If I just zoom in on it, we can see a little bit better. It did wick above it, but it closed back below that line. I'm waiting for a strong breakout through it with a close above to confirm the breakout, which happens on this candle here. Once I get that, my entry is the candle after. So let's place a trade here at the open. The only other condition at this point is that this candle has to be before 12 o'clock. Stop loss goes at the bottom of my trading range, defined by the 9.30 to 9.45 candle. And then I aim for one and a half times risk to reward. Within a couple of hours, that trade ran its course and was a winning one. All of these different conditions come from my testing. So let me bring up my code and show you how I actually test these strategies. I begin by importing the main libraries that I use, such as pandas and numpy. And then I define a few of my main parameters. So my time frame, which I'm setting to 15 minutes. I'm then testing this on the S&P 500 CFD, a starting balance of 100, the currency is relevant, risking 2% per trade. The market open time is 9.30. And then I'm looking for the first 15 minutes of the day. I tested 15, 30, and 60. 60 didn't work, 30 was okay, but 15 turned out to be the best. The market closes at 5 p.m., so 16.45 is the last candle of the day. And my cutoff for when I can enter a trade is before 12 o'clock. Exit trades at the end of the day is set to false, and taking just one per trade is also set to false, which is what I talked about earlier. If a trade gets stopped out, but then another signal appears, then I would still take that trade. I then load in my price data from a CSV file, and I'd make sure that it's configured to New York time zones. This generate signals function is where most of the strategy logic actually lives. I have various conditions or trading rules here that the strategy must follow. This then allows me to generate my entry signals as well as my stop loss and take profits. Then after I run the back test, I like to visualize the trades on the candlestick chart. So here I can manually zoom in and select the trades and see what actually happened with them. This is really useful when I'm developing the strategy because I want to make sure that it's doing what I'm expecting it to do. So in this case, we can see that that is the 10 o'clock candle. That is a 9.30 a.m. So that's our range. Candle after that broke through and closed above. So the entry signal was right here. And then it carried on to a take profit over here. So this at a glance just shows me that it does seem to be doing what I expect it to do. And then lastly, I can output the equity curve on the S&P 500. Now this is going back five years, so from the start of 2020 up to the current day. The equity curve is really strong. A couple of dips along the way, some drawdown, but generally it's looking pretty good. Down here, I've got the actual metrics for it. So the annual return is 62% with a drawdown of just under 28%. A win rate of 47%, but the risk to reward that we're aiming for is one and a half. These results are based on me holding the trade over multiple days. And as you can see, the longest trade is six days. But I can modify the condition so that I now exit at the end of the day. If I change this to true, 
and then I rerun my back test, I'm going to get a new equity curve and new metrics based on that. So the equity curve itself looks very similar, but if you notice the numbers from before, the final balance is quite a lot smaller. And if I go into the metrics, you can see the annual return has dropped to about 44, 43.5%, drawdown of 23. The win rate is slightly improved, but the average risk to reward now is 1.25. So although I'm aiming for 1.5, it doesn't always get to that because the trades are just stopped at the end of the day. This means that the preferred option is to hold the trades for as long as needed, but if that's not an option, then closing them at the end of the day still performs really well. And for comparison, this is the same strategy tested on Bitcoin, again between 2020 and 2025, with a similar result, and I've left the condition that the trades are closed at the end of the day. So this gave a return of 38%, 25 and a half drawdown, 47.8% win rate and 1.37 average risk to reward. And then to show that it even works on Forex, this is GBP versus USD over the last five years. I tested on a couple of Forex pairs, Euro USD didn't work so well, but pound dollar seems to be profitable. I'm quite pleased with the results from this strategy. It's simple, but it's effective and it does generate a good number of trades. On this pound dollar, for example, I had 826 trades over that five year period. That means that on most days there will be a trade. And I know that these market open kind of strategies are fairly common and there's loads of variations. So let me know in the comments if you've already tried something like this and what you thought of it. You can also post suggestions for other strategies if there's something that you'd like me to test out. And if you found this video useful and want to see more back tests like this, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.